artists out there that are approaching these galleries in ways that these galleries absolutely don't want to be approached in. I mean, in ways that they absolutely hate. And a lot of this comes from a lack of preparedness on the artist side. And even further than that, it comes from a lack of knowledge of how do I even begin to think about approaching an art gallery? It seems really intimidating for some people. And as my journey has gone as a collector and as an art dealer, I've spoken with so many different artists and they just have absolutely no idea how to organize themselves in a manner that allows them to be gravitational towards an art gallery. And I really wanna just help bridge that gap. So today I'm talking to the artists. I usually talk to the collectors, but today it's all about the artists. So let's get right to it. What's going on YouTube? It's Mariah Lease. This is Frame. And I'm back again, of course, to talk about all things art. Usually I'm talking to my collectors, but today I really just wanna vibe with my artists. I really wanna talk to the artists because that's where it starts. I hope we can all agree that the artists are making the art world go round. And I truly think that we're missing out on so much great work because of artists out there who don't understand the business of art. And a lot of them wanna get into these galleries, but they have absolutely no idea how to even start. And so I wanna give you guys a few tips that I think would be helpful. There are tons of videos out there giving you guys tips and tricks. As I've been an art dealer, I'm definitely an avid collector. And when I was running my gallery, I got so many artists that would come in and ask me questions like, how much does it cost to put my work on the wall? How much it costs to, you know, questions like that, very silly questions like that. And I just really want to give you guys some tips and tricks on what I think would be beneficial um, before you even begin to think about approaching the gallery. The very first thing that I really want to tell you guys to begin doing is create your work in a collection. Create in collections. So for a beginning artist, that might seem really hard and really intimidating because you might not have a style yet. You might not really know the direction that you're gonna go as an artist, but for someone that's really preparing and really getting ready to show their work to a gallery and approach a gallery, you're probably a bit seasoned and you've probably been painting for at least a few years, right? I would really advise you guys to when you create your work, create in a collection. And what I mean by that is you're gonna have to really just dig deep, do some real deep digging and figure out what is it that you wanna say to the world over a series of pieces and how do you wanna say that? Um, a collection feels like solidarity. A collection feels cohesive. A, co a collection would be a few pieces, maybe five to 12 pieces or more pieces that feel like one another that you have an objective at the end of your collection that you want your audience to feel or to think about. And when you're creating collections and when you create with an end objective, it allows you to be able to really talk about your work and present it in a cohesive manner. I guarantee you it'll sound a lot better if when you approach a gallery and you're speaking to them, if you get the chance to actually talk to them and you're showing them your collection, you're able to say, hey, I created this collection in 2020 and it's called A Memoir of Mariah Elise and it's about this, 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 and this. Collections help you organize your thoughts and organize what is it that you wanna say to the world and then you do that over a number of pieces. When you create a collection, you're telling a cohesive story. And when you go to a gallery and you see a collection of works, you feel that, you feel the similarity in all of the pieces. Something's gonna be similar in each piece that makes them all go together. So my next point, point number two, is being able to avidly speak about your work. Be able to speak about your work. If you can't speak about your work and you can't explain to the galleries what your work and what that collection is about, how do you expect them to be able to explain that to someone that's looking to buy it? or someone that's viewing it, or when they're talking about it, when you have an open exhibition. You have to be able to speak to your work. And what I would advise you guys to do, this is what I've done when I, when I was a painter, when I was really practicing being an artist. I would press record when I started to paint, and I would speak, I would talk, I would just talk it all the way through. And on top of me talking it all the way through, 
I also would write about it. And writing about it and talking about it and then going back and listening to myself really helped me understand what it was I was trying to say. Even outside of that initial point of me making an objective of what my collection would be about. It allowed me to really think everything through and be really clear on my thoughts. So when it was time for me to talk to someone about what this is about, I'm very clear on it. And I think that makes a lot of artists stand out. When I meet an artist that can't speak about their work, it, it makes it very difficult for you to speak about it. And there are a few different ways people like to collect and buy work and buy art. You have people that just look at the aesthetics and they're fine with it being aesthetically pleasing or they're fine with it being aesthetically pleasing and that's okay for them. But you have also people who fall in love with the story. And then you have that group of people that fall in love with the story and the aesthetics. So only one of those groups fall in love with aesthetics only. So if I'm an art dealer or I'm a gallerist and I need to speak to the story of the piece or the story of the collection and you haven't been able to speak that to me, then it's gonna be very difficult for me to sell. <laughs> Especially if I'm selling to someone who really enjoys the story. I fall in love with stories when it comes to pieces and I fall in love with the aesthetics and the story. It takes both for me. So I need to be able to hear the artist really speak about it, especially if you're a living artist and you show up at your own exhibitions. You need to be able to talk about your work, really be able to talk about it. So practice that, practice talking about it and practice writing about it. So when you're approaching a gallery and they decide to take you past the submission phase, you're able to really speak about your work. You just really wanna know your work backwards and forwards. You don't wanna miss a step when it comes to knowing your own artwork. And you wanna be able to speak to it with so much confidence, not arrogance, but with so much confidence and with so much authority and so much feeling that when you're speaking about it, the person that you're speaking to, they feel you. Because art a lot of times is just so much about feeling. And if they're not able to feel you through your words, which some people need that, then they might not feel you through the painting. They might not feel you through your collection. And sometimes when you're able to speak about it, it adds to it. Sometimes it takes it away, but sometimes it adds to it. So really practice being very knowledgeable about your own work. My next point truly deserves a video of its own. And that's being able to price your work. So when you're approaching a gallery and the gallerists ask you, once you've gotten past the submission stage and they ask you, well, how much does your work usually sell for? And your market is all over the place. It's all over the place. You have no idea. Sometimes it sells for 700, sometimes it sells for a thousand and you're not able to pinpoint what made this one 700 and what made this one a thousand. What, what is the difference between the two that made, you know, what, you're, that means your market is all over the place. You need to develop a solid market for your artwork. And what I would advise you guys to do, whether you're doing commissions or you're selling pieces, keep track on a spreadsheet or a database or whatever you need to use. Keep track of how much you're selling your work for and keep track of why. Are you selling it for 70 cents an inch? Are you selling certain sizes at certain prices? Are you selling certain subject matters at certain prices? Are you, you know, what are you doing? What's, what's your formula? And there's several videos out there about formula and I guarantee you guys, I'm gonna make an entire video about how to price your work because you really want it to be consistent. You want to really sound on what your artist market looks like for yourself. And the reason that you wanna do that is because you want it to be cohesive across all boards. If you have a gallery representing you in the South and then you have a gallery representing you in the East, you don't want to, you'll end up telling them different numbers because you're really not sure. So you want to be really sure about how much your work is and you want to have a formula and a way of thinking behind why you're pricing your work a specific price. And you want to stick to that and gradually increase how much your work is going to be worth over time, depending on how your market is doing, how your personal market is doing. If you don't know how much your work is worth, if you don't know how much it's been selling for over time, and if it's been fluctuating as a market, then you're not gonna be able to tell the gallery. Now, what that looks like for the gallery is, is he or is she selling work 
I don't know. I don't know if she's really or he's really selling his work or is he giving some people a high number and then some people a really low number? So what that leads to is someone coming to the gallery and seeing their work for five times higher than what they've been selling it for over the last year and they don't understand why. We need to know what was your market before you even step into the gallery, if that makes any sense at all. So those are, those are my few little tips on how to even prepare your work before you approach the gallery. And before I made this video, honestly, I was gonna do an entire video on how to approach a gallery, but I felt like each step needed to be broken down. So today was readiness, preparing. The next step we're gonna talk about is gonna be research. And then the next step is gonna be the actual approach. I wanted to break it down for you guys because just throwing it all in one video, I don't feel like we were gonna be able to really talk about um, each step in the depth that I think it deserves. So guys, look, this is the end of my video. If you guys vibe with me, if y'all wanna hear more information like this, if you wanna talk to me more, let's talk. Let's talk in the comments. Um, if you're with it, if you vibe with it, go ahead and subscribe, press the little like button. That really helps me out and encourage me to keep going. Um, I would really like to have some dialogue with you guys. So like, be cool and leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me what questions you have. I want to talk to you guys. I don't want to just talk to the camera. This isn't like a one person dialogue thing. I hope that when I put this on the internet, I'm talking to collectors, I'm talking to artists, I'm talking to dealers. And if you guys don't agree with me, tell me why. I want to learn from you. Again, I'm Mariah Elise. This is Frame. I'm so glad I changed the name of that. And guys, I will talk to you next time. I think I'm going to try to start doing two videos a week. Uh, let's see how that goes. All right. Y'all stay good.